Hello, everybody. This is Nessa Nessa Lady D's Unique Creations. Hey, I am here at Perkins. I have breakfast. I have French toast and pancakes. And this is the lemon that I got for the water. Let's see how this works. But anyway, good morning, everybody. I came to share some topic information with you guys about hiring. City. And the hiring process in New York City is that um, a lot of stuff is virtual. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. And I will say to you that I am going to invest in some free tripods for these phones. In New York City, when you apply for a job that's civil service, that means you have to have some type of background and experience. And in the process of having background and experience, you have to make sure that you, um, you can do the job. And a lot of young people are coming out of high school and they're applying for these jobs and they're on the wait list and they don't have the experience. So, as I stated to you, the way they're getting hired now is through a lot of them through virtual. I don't even eat this, but I'm going to try it this way. This is the French toast and pancakes. Oops, a lot. But as I was saying to you guys, a lot of people are doing their interviews and stuff virtually. And a lot of people don't have all the experience that's needed. So when they go into these offices, they are, you know, requesting the property shops, and you know, they want, they, they want to give up all the good information. When you are the worker, I think it's your responsibility that when you wake up in the morning, and you know you're going to work and you're going to service the public, that you put that attitude away. Nobody should wake up to be excited to go to a job interview and they're being treated wrong. Perk is on point today with that. Ooh, I'm gonna use this on my pancakes. Thank you. You're welcome. When you go into these jobs, nobody wants to wake up and their attitude is like, oh, I'm going to get my job, you know, I got my interview. And when they get there, the people are literally debating with them. This not your interview. Hey, doll, how are you doing? I'm speaking only for the tapping this morning for a young man. Can you ready to order? Yeah, it's yeah. good, nice and fresh. Oh, it's very good. Sure, and you want bacon or sausage? So, but I'm saying to you guys, you got it. That when you are a civil way. service person, but if it happened to me, when I got in the interview, I had the requirement to have a bachelor's degree, and I was like, 
needed to have all this education and years of experience. But my years of experience was scattered around and being your own nonprofit organization and founder and executive officer, all the details didn't meet the city's requirements as far as to um, experience. So the lady had to go all the way back from when I worked at GSA, which was from 1998 to 2004, to question me about my experience. And I'm like, ma'am, I just gave you a master's, but when the jobs tell you you need to have a bachelor's at the time of hiring, you have to have that bachelor's at the time of hiring. Because if you don't have it, they will overlook you. So she wound up having to use my experience. And, um, she had to scatter all these different years. New York City. Y'all know that these youth do not have this experience. Y'all know that they have not had long histories of work in secretarial areas and business areas. And you guys need to really lighten up with that. Bring back programs that's hiring youth to gain experience, not just particular youth. Because I remember in high school, I wanted to do the work program and I couldn't do it. I didn't understand why. They're very selective. Everybody not an A plus student. Everybody ain't a B plus student. Some people just be in school just getting by. So with that being said, I think that that is very, very unfair and something needs to be done about that. You guys need to take the time to understand that all the high school graduates are not going to go to college. Not because they don't want to, because they want to work. And the way it is, the economy is today, they want to work. They want to make money, they want to pay bills. And then when they go to live out on their own, they're crying because the rent is crazy. I have a taste for eggs. So when I say those things, there's a time when the youth come and they graduate in high school, if they're not registered for college, they want to go to work. They start to put in these jobs that they see around the city, working in NYCHA, working in where they're working. Well, NYCHA is very good with their residents if they get selected. They do offer a lot of programs and a lot of services for their residents. I'm not going to tell you they don't NYCHA do. And these are the largest city agencies globally. So when I say this, I'm saying this because a lot of times you're wanting requirements that's not able to be met. And you have to start putting these programs and services, like people get summer youth jobs. A lot of them don't do the summer youth jobs because they feel like if you're 14, 15, you're not going to be in a program. You're going to be in a camp where you're included, you're included as a kid. You're limited to do certain things. And some people may be able to do a lot of different things, but they can't do it because they in a job that they stuck. So what are we teaching the kids? Getting a job that you're gonna be stuck at and not happy with doing? Also, they need to have more programs where it's not just summertime. That money is not spent during the summertime. Expand that money throughout the winter. You get the same programs and organizations, the same contracts. And they keep doing the same things over and over and over and over and over again. When do you give other people a chance to step in and say, you know what, we can we can jog these kids, but we got to pay them. Um, if you have a summer camp, it might have a low ratio of children, but a large ratio of teenagers. What happened to programs that's turning into programs for the teens? You know, maybe that 15, 16 year old may need to learn how to file something. A filing system is really hard. And they gotta teach it your way when they go to work, when you go to their job because everybody's system is different. 
But when the city is telling you you need to have two years or 18 months of clerical or secretarial work and you're just coming out of high school and the most you ever worked if you got selected was something new. Where did that start you at? Discouragement. When you walk into these jobs and you see people talking to you and you're like, oh, I'm here for an interview and they're debating with you that you're not here for an interview. Where does that go? We got attitude at home. I tell that to people all the time. We those attitudes at home. Because at the end of the day, don't nobody want to wake up and deal with your nasty mood. And I don't want to hear that, oh, I'm not a morning person. But get a night, y'all. This is fresh. This is good. And I have here in my food. She gotta take that back. Excuse me. Take the time to um, review a lot of things in the job. You have to take responsibility for yourself too. And second, if you don't meet those requirements, I would say still put in for the job. And after you put in for the job, let them know, listen, I don't have this experience, you know. Is there anything else around it I can get? So you go into a job, they're going to train you the way they want you to do things. So that's the important thing, training. Each job trains different. They have funding in place that is for training. And the responsible and important thing to do is make sure that you find jobs that train you. That's another way of getting experience. I'm sorry, guys. I got off topic. I don't even think I could have said that part. But um, the food is good. The eggs wasn't hot and fresh. Thank God I looked down. If I would have ate that pizza here, I would have freaked out. I know it ain't mine. It's too long. Yep. I'm back to my practicing, my timing. I got up, I took a walk. I'm about to say, why is she eating with um, her hands? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't eat French soap, but this is good. Yeah. And then, as I was saying about jobs, this is like, when you go for an application, Try to learn a little more about the organization that you're applying for the business. That's important. Because a lot of times people don't know about the organization or the business and then they'll ask you that and you'll be looking like, huh? That happened to me. I was so busy trying to go on job interviews trying to get myself together and get my life in order. I was just going on job interviews and this made me really stop. The lady said, before you next time go for a job interview, make sure that you understand the business history. And that was very, 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 very important. I didn't have knowledge of the business. And I told her, I said, I'm being honest, I need a job. And she said, we'll train you, but I want you to be in a job that you're happy with. 
So that was important. That's something to think about. Being a job that's important. If you have to work, people have to work, live, eat. I don't want to hear, oh, I can't work, this and that. If you have to pay your bills, you're going to pay them. And if you don't have any income coming in, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to have to work. And then, I'm a late person when it came to my education. I went to school all my life. But, um, I want to get my GED when I was 25. Yeah, 25. I stayed in school. I kept going to GED schools. I couldn't go. I wanted to find in a school that I got my GED and associates at the same time. I was too sh kind of shy of my associates. So. What scared me was mad. I wound up leaving the school. And that January, I started at John Jay College. I just had my baby. He was about six months. June, July, August, I'm not talking about June, I'm about January. He was about six months. And then when I started the job, it was January 2000, January 1988, I started working for the United States federal government. And I had my high school diploma and I was in college. That's how I got the job. It was student training. And I wind up working at this job. I loved it. I loved the people. It was a little challenging, but I got the hang of it. That's how I came to job. After a year, you better have the hang of it. But anyway, I wind up doing this job and going to school full time, working full time. Going home, cooking, taking care of kids. And at the time, I had five kids. I had my nephew and my niece. So what happened was, in the process of doing all that, you get burned out. And this is where I tell people, celebrate yourself. Make sure you celebrate yourself. You're welcome. Enjoy. They're making me a brand new fresh one, OK? Thank you. I didn't know nothing about celebrating myself. So what I did was, I kept working and working and working. And my friend told me one day about this group called Empire State College. This is a great college. So I said to her, I just ain't no more if I give it a try. And I called that school. And my mentor, Alan Mendez, spoke to me and took me under his wing. And I thank this man helped me and he showed me to stick it with, stick it in. And he used to do my lessons and my lessons was work on top of work on top of work. I was like, damn, another one? Another writing? And I got to the end, I was so tired, I didn't even realize it was time to graduate. He said, um, are you ready for graduation? I said, no, I'm not going to graduate. I'm going to pass it out. You know, I'm going to keep going. I don't know what I'm going to do. That's how I was. He said, oh, no, you're going to graduate. So I was just like, no. Nah. You know, every time I was done with stuff, and I wasn't caring about me. So what happened was I went, and I went to the graduation. Before the graduation, I had to go get my cap and cap. So I took my kids. We went to go get this cap and gown. We had such a ball. Some parts of Manhattan, you don't even visit. You'd be amazed. But we had a good time. So in the process of um, going to the, um, what you call that? Going to the graduation cap and gown pickup, we went picture shopping. We just had a nice time. So the day of the graduation, my family came, my kids and my, my ex-family, and my little son was five. And he was so tiny. You know when kids are little, they got the cutest voice. And he said, oh shoot, check out my mommy. Hey mommy. And you know during the music, it's quiet and they laugh and they're like, no, 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 sit down. He's trying to run over there. And I'm like, oh my God, my God. That was the moment that I felt recognized. I felt recognized. That five-year-old started screaming, there goes my mommy. Hi, mommy. And that was the, the cutest moment ever. So from there, I wound up signing up for my bachelor's, which was another two years. I did the bachelor's. 
I was going through so much stuff with that one too. Personal life stuff. So after I got the bachelor's, I was like, hmm, I need some more. I wound up going to my god sister Keisha's page. And I always tell her, I went to that school because of you. I went and I looked it up. And the people that, the intake coordinators, once they get your attention, they got you. But um, I wound up going to Argus University. They're closed now. Okay, so in school. It was one senior dean. Awesome. But I got my associate, I, mean, I got my master's here. I here. apologize for that. No problem. Thank you. So we have a fresh new plate. Let's see how this one works out. I don't want no more of this. So anyway, what happened was, I got my, my master's. And you know, I'm sitting here going, let me go for my doctor. I got to almost set. Half the right and part, which was thick in me. And she said, if you would have did this one paragraph over, you could have fixed your grade. They closed now. I wrote them down with a doctoral degree in 2016. It is 2022 and I'm still going forward. I am now at North Central University. I am on a small break right now. A lot of people have conversations about education. And I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to promote education to whatever level and degree you want. It is something that you work hard for. It is something that you want. You want to accomplish it. You're going to go for it. So, it comes to other people's ideas about education. It's either they don't have it. They don't have the passion to get it. They don't have the time. They may not have the money. They may not want it. That's you. But don't splurge that attitude as if it's the correct attitude. Let's see how this tastes. It's good. Yeah. So, when I say to people, I am getting my education, and I'm not going to stop. And when people speak like that, the same way you feel about a business and you feel about education and you feel about experience and you feel about life and that's how you feel. I have everything across the board. And this is something that I start and I'm gonna finish and I'm gonna take the time to do what I need to do for myself. This is what I want to do. If you go into millions of dollars of debt, you're a fool. But if you go into a little debt, hey, pay it off. You was enjoying it when you was getting it. That's how I am. These sausages. Mm. Oh, phenomenal. Excellent setup. Yeah, much, much better. And I do talk a lot, but when it comes to certain things, when it comes to your education, when it comes to work, you have to do what's going to be right for you. You can't worry about everybody else's experience. But they gotta understand that it took them probably five years to make that one positive when they doing the business. So that's what's important. Being on top of yourself and doing what you had to do, learning your jobs, 
and I remember experiences trying to gain experience, school things to open up, more job centers in the schools, jobs need to offer more services. How are you asking me to work at your job and you don't even get training? They have high schoolers earning associate's degree at the same time earning their high school diploma. Why you can't have it where you want to be a city service social worker, you want to be in YPD, you want to be certain things, you got to have your associates. If this is a school that these kids want to go into, promote more of that into these Title I and Title II schools. Some of them don't even get the option. And a lot of funding is cut, especially through the federal because of attendance rates. So they just bought my food in full. So I say to you, Catch that a lot with me. I ain't claiming no dimension. I ain't claiming no, no old timers. It's young times. I'm still young. Yeah. I love these talking things. About three minutes, I'm going to shut off. I've done good. This is here, having breakfast. Just chit chatting with you guys. It's called chit chatting with Ness Ness. Hey. And that's for us today. I'm going to go in and get a couple of things in the house done. And just relax. Not much I can do. I just have to find it confusing. I'm in my seventh month and I am still healing. So, with that, today is a good day where I have to push myself to walk, which I don't mind. And then I'm pushing myself to go up the stairs. I'm able to now register for a gym. I'm looking for swim. Um, I'm going to see if they have a YMCA out here so I can learn how to swim. Also, just have to push myself to go. And that's it. I thank you guys for my sus subscribing to my page. That's awesome. I took the time, I did my own little cut over. So, it's the best I can do. Um, what is some bumpers? I'm gonna track it up. But it's too hot. You're going through menopause. You're not gonna put no hair on. You don't want no wig on or none of that. So, I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do with that. A picture of my mother, God bless her soul. She passed when she was 46. Young. So, part of my aging is I celebrate for both of us. My mother loves to celebrate. I always tell people, I don't care what my mother did. My mother used to drink. I don't care what she did. I don't know. For me, drinking is not nothing that excites me. 
That does not excite me. That is not one of my addictions. Um, drinking is a disease because you can't stop it. And then when you stop it, sometimes it's just takes forever to stop. And the way it just tears your body down, it tears it down. I'm done. I don't want to sit here no longer. It's nice and I'm in from Staten Island and I'm Perkins. So I'm having breakfast. We have Perkins, Tim Horton out here. My castles. We have Chick-fil-A. I haven't seen a Chick-fil-A in Brooklyn. Good morning, can I find you from Ready so I can put my stuff together. And look, uh, half of a French toast, leg, one sausage, and a piece of meat. And for those who don't know, that's a lot. I had the sleeve 2016. I'm on the catch of a hernia in 2020. And I had the bypass in 2020. So I have a pouch. I don't eat a lot. Now I am working on no sweets. I do have tummy, tummy time. But when I stand up, it's just the way I'm sitting. Tummy, tummy time is flat than what it was. Ooh, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, go, go. We have 30 more minutes and 5 seconds. He is blowing his nose and I do not want to hear that. Yeah. Not what I'm eating. Have a good day and I'll talk with you guys later. Bye!